All right, so uh, as Ben mentioned, we're going to start off talking about model variants. And I'm going to give a quick demonstration of how to set up model variants and when to use model variants. And then towards the end, if we have time, uh, I plan to just go through a few of our um, graphical tools buried inside of our analysis window. So first, let's talk about model variants. So um, whenever you're creating a model, the first step of any analysis is to figure out some sort of baseline result. Um, this could be based on how your current production design is, how your last design was, um, or if this is a whole new design, it could be um, what your results are looking like based on either tolerances that some company has guessed on the prints or uh, just some base level of a capabilities database that you're using for your results. And after you run your baseline results, you might end up with a curve that looks like this, where you're out of spec at the lower spec limit, you're out of spec at the upper spec limit, you simply have too much variation within your model, and about 11.6% of the time in this case, this total out percent, and about 11% of the time you end up having to scrap or rework this part. So this isn't exactly acceptable, so what if our baseline results are bad? Well, uh, the next step that you do in the design process would be a design change. Uh, a large part of any design process involves a lot of what-if scenarios, um, when you're doing a dimensional engineering project, common examples of what if scenarios are, what if we changed a gd &T value? What if we changed the geometry? Um, what if we changed uh, what locators we're using? So among several other possible what if scenarios, those are a few. And so that's where model variants come in. Uh, the goal of model variants is to add a simple way to uh, for multiple scenarios to coexist all in the same model. And the goal is that uh, you can set up each of these variants. So for example, my first variant here is called baseline, and then I have one where I change a tolerance, one where I change the geometry, and one where I change a locator, and I'll get more into what this window looks like later. But the idea is that you set up all these different, you know, what if scenarios or configurations and you can quickly switch back and forth between them without having to go through your tree and turn on and off a tolerance, on and off a move, and on and off a measure, or turn on and off several moves, measures, and tolerances. And whenever you end up doing that and your model gets more and more crowded, you might uh, be unsure that every single time you're doing the exact right thing and turning on and off the correct tolerance or on and off the correct measure for what you're going for. Uh, so the goal of model variance is that you have to set it up once, then 3DCS is going to remember what moves, tolerances, and measures you had turned on and off for that specific model variant is what it's called. And then through this window, you can quickly apply and change between your you know, baseline of potentially three, four, or five, as many other variants as you want uh, to check out which one's going to give you your best results.